she is dominating at work and at home. And today we're getting some wisdom from working mom showrunner, writer, director, and star, Katherine Reitman. <laughs> So excited for you and uh, really sort of inspired. You know, I love that we can inspire each other, but you did a TED talk and it was the beginning of your journey to becoming a lady boss. And you had to do some convincing of yourself to be in the position that you're in right now, didn't you? Yeah, it's an interesting journey, isn't it? And yeah. I, 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 look, I'm sitting in front of someone who inspires me daily, both on Instagram, holy crap, those arms. Thank you. Um, along with your career in general. But yeah, it's, I feel like when I look back, and this took a lot of therapy, but you start looking at all the moments that you hesitate, that you second guess yourself, that you look in the mirror and go, not me, not special enough. Yes. And so there was a, it took, I wasn't gonna get affirmation from outside, so for me it had to start inside. It had to start with me. I want everyone to take a look at this TED Talk because it inspired me like just this morning. Take a look. Have you ever felt a tingle inside that you were meant for more, that something outside of your prescribed life was calling to you? Guys, whatever voice you've been gifted with, and it is a gift, I'm here not to encourage but to demand that you at least consider it. Because why not you, baby? So good. You know, it, if that gets someone to take the first step in a direction they're scared to take, I think it is so worth it. It led you to where you are now. You are the boss. Mm. I want to know about the challenges uh, to being a boss and a woman in the workplace. Do you find it hard? Of course. It's impossible. But it's also, I mean, look, there's a lot of self-discovery that happens along the way. I think a quality I see in a lot of women a lot is that we constantly want to be liked. Yes. Being likable is trained within us at such a young age. I remember being told to smile more, uh, to make up for my shortcomings physically. I had to sort of develop a sense of humor. And part of being a boss is unfortunately not always being liked. It's making decisions that not everyone's going to be happy with, but are better for the greater good. Is there anything you do to help coax yourself through that? Because I have a hard time with that. When I you make a decision. Alcohol and drugs, usually. Alcohol and drugs, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a little message track that goes through your mind when you're in that situation and your ears are burning, you're embarrassed, you don't want to stand up for yourself, your voice is shaky, mm. but you still have to make the decision and you have to sit in it and own it. Yes. What do you say to yourself? Oh, God, that's a great question. Um, I think, you know, there's a moment I get in bed every night where I process my day, I beat myself up heavily, mm -hmm. and I think what I'm trying to do more this year is in that moment, forgive myself a little more, understand what happened, you know, I, I call it being shifted out of your power, right? Like, we've got the center all the time, and we're constantly sort of being pulled to the left and the right off of it, whether it's our husband or our children or a difficult person we work with or someone we love at work. It's, we're constantly being pulled left and right of it. So I have to keep coming back to the center and going, what is my essence? What is my vision here? Mm -hmm. And having compassion for all those other entities, but also compassion for myself. Because I'm the first person to lose compassion for myself. <laughs> You're not alone in that. Yeah. I think that's amazing. So you have to remember, this is for a reason. Mm. You're not putting down rules and making decisions because you feel like it arbitrarily. Right. You're, you're on a course somewhere, and you got to remind yourself of that. To be true to who you are. Right, and look, mistakes are made constantly on, yes. on my behalf, and I have yeah. to learn that, own those mistakes, and hopefully yeah. not make them again. Right. Um, but yeah, it's... I'm on course, but also not always perfect on that course. And none of us are. Now, you're a boss at work, in the workplace. I want to know what happens at home. Oh, girl. So do you just, like, let the reins go and let your partner <laughs> do everything? Or uh, are you still the, you're on top of it, micromanaging, you're on top of all the kids' activities? Who's the boss at home? I think it's that same thing, right, where I'm, I'm, I'm it's very hard, and I, I'm very curious about this for you as well, yeah. how to shift from that mode, right? Right. Because you get home, all of a sudden your kids run at you, you can barely get your purse off and wash your hands fast enough to to get back into mommy mode yes. and wife mode and it is a it's I'm not so graceful at it I'm still learning it mm -hmm. but how to I don't want to be the boss at home I think I'm supposed to be like it's hard to get off of that horse yes. get back onto land but getting into that zone of knowing when to release power to husband mm -hmm. knowing when to let kids to shine and not micromanage yeah it's a dance 
Oh man, I'm still figuring that out. Uh, I have a girlfriend who has a saying, and she calls it like she gets home and she's shooting guns. Yep. It's like you get home. It's like why was that done like that? Why aren't the dishes done? That's the wrong homework. Did you get their books up? Ba -ba -da -ba -da. And you hear yourself, and you're like, what am I doing? Isn't it funny that both analogies, getting off a horse and shooting guns, why are we always cowboys? <laughs> Why can't we be violent. graceful ballerinas dancing the Swan Lake, figuring out our life? Why are we freaking Clint Eastwood? I don't know. It's hard. It's, it's hard to downshift when you get home. And Male gaze. Now, season two of Working Moms is all about relationships. Yes. What was your favorite part about working on season two, knowing season one was such an out-the-gate success? You know, there was a lot of challenges to season two in that we knew that we'd hit a certain mark. We were all really proud of what we did. Yeah. And we wanted to make sure that we kept pushing that, you know, mm -hmm. that we were going for something authentic. I have so many women and men who would approach me on the street saying, that's my story. It's not just, hey, I like your show. It's, you're telling my story. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of responsibility. I want to make sure that I can keep doing those people justice. Yeah. And I think as far as enjoyment factor, I, you know, it was a little bit easier in that I knew what I was into. I had the same amazing crew around me, the same incredible cast around me with a couple of new hits. Yeah. And so there was familiarity. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So <laughs> season two of Working Moms airs Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. Enjoy this woman and everything she's accomplished because we all gain from it. Catherine, we love you. Thanks well, for joining you, us. Tracy.